We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creative. We are here. World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, Go to worldfinancialgroup.com. She was told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough too strong she was told to give up her dreams and move on she was told to just be pretty be quiet be a lady she was told that women had to stay on their side of the court stay in your lane playing and competing with men was insane she was told that men and women would never be equal dreaming like that would only be linked to your mind to your soul she never listened that their thinking was old. She is natural. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is natural. Greetings and welcome again for another day of Access Wealth Nation with Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse. Getting your check up from the neck up. Experiencing the financial world on another platform. And so, again, uh, we are broadcast through WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem, and also by Soul City Network, the power of our new uh, arena, our new building. And with Soul City, we go past soul. We go to our ancestors and we rise. And so I just wanted to add that energy because I am totally powered up today and um, just want to share some wonderful information today. As usual, got different things to talk about, but first and foremost, we want to definitely, for those of you who know about our How Money Works, Stop Being a Sucker. I know it comes out on the other side for some reason, but Stop Being a Sucker uh, book. Uh, if you'd like to get a copy of the book, you know, uh, we are now, we've got new books in, so um, we'll be glad to provide. Just send me an email at Anaj Enterprises. Yes, that's A-N-A-J Enterprises, uh, Inc. at gmail.com. Just say, listened and heard on Access Wealth Nation. Would love to get a book and we will get it to you. Also, those of you who are uh, looking for the opportunity. You know, I always talk about you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. That applies to your finances also. It applies to your health, but also to your, your finances. So if you would like to have a free financial review, no obligation, no obligation, just being able to help you to get on your right track, you just call 646-375-2121. And one of our associates will be glad to assist you. Um, I've had the honor to train a number of folks and I love having them with me uh, because this is a time when I believe that, no, I know that we as a people, especially in our urban community, need to focus in on our finances. That is for some reason, 
it seems to be a curse word when it comes out to talking about our issues. Well, you can't get anywhere without money and making sure you have enough, make sure you're budgeted, make sure you have your insurances, making sure that uh, you have your emergency funds, uh, making sure that you're properly protected, you have your, um, also I wanna say your retirement plan. You know, these are the things that are so important and no one's talking to us about it. And so we've got to make a difference there. We have to take our lives and our future in our own hands. Now, I just want to make a little public service announcement from myself. It has nothing to do with Soul City. Uh, it is my belief and understanding. I know we should be elated that um, Juneteenth has become a national holiday. Okay. I am not that elated because I believe as um, we have, uh, Queen Mother uh, Blakely has said a number of times, cut the check, cut the check. You know, you're giving us the fluff and the buff. You're giving us uh, a holiday, which please, I'm going to definitely beg, plead to everyone, do not allow this to become a time when someone gives you a sale to go buy and spend. Please do not have it where, just like Martin Luther King's birthday, that now it moves around for every Monday close to the 15th. Make it respectful to our ancestors. Juneteenth represents a time where we basically, it's not a celebration. It is an acknowledgement of an okie doke that we got sold. Two years prior, we were, we were freed technically uh, by um, Abraham Lincoln and it took two years for it to get to be an official situation. Come on now, that's not something, would, would, you, would you really wanna celebrate that or would you like it acknowledged? And the best way to acknowledge it is either some type of reparations. Again, I believe that reparations should be on a level of uh, land and reduction in tax. Land and no real estate tax. I, you know, you know I think it's a money situation. And um, I, I adore uh, Queen Mother Blakely for, for holding the post. She has held the post and she's now telling people she has negotiated a many a times and she told them cut the check. And when you get the check, we need to know what to do with it. So we have to become financially literate. And so, you know, for me, this is a time where we have to be strategic. And that counts. And I call out to my fellow financial advisors and accountants that are out there of color, get busy, talk to your people, educate them. If you don't have a system to educate them on finance, then contact me. I will assist you. I mean, this is not about businesses and what companies we work for. Right now, we've got to save our people. We have to help our black and brown people. And uh, I've become more passionate about it since we took our trip to uh, Tulsa to the Black Wall Street. Those were a, a set of people that took a situation of where people would not serve them. Hmm, sounds similar. Uh, would not serve them, would not assist them on this equal level as others. And what happened is, is that it now they decided to have their own businesses. They did their own businesses. They served each other. A dollar lasted three to five years in that community. I hope y'all are understanding this. We're, I know we've been talking about it since we got back and it's a reason for it because the ancestors are talking to us for us to get busy get our businesses together, you know, and, and to be ready for what comes next. So now we see where there's some acknowledgement of the detradation and the, the Holocaust that was impl imploded upon us as a people of color. And now there needs to be some type of reparations for it. And it's not just some type, it has to be a strong situation. So again, this is my philosophy. 
And in my position, you know, I listen to, uh, we have elections taking place coming on the 22nd of June. You know, it's different when you have a situation of where, number one, you're supposed to be emancipated, you're to be free, yet there's still a voting right bill that allows you to vote or not. You know, you got to be kind of cuckoo crazy to un to see that this is definitely something that's not right. But though that it be, would I talk to all of the candidates that are out there? I would say, I know we have health issues and people want to deal with health. I know we have uh, crime issues in our community and self-inflicted some crimes, some not. Well, would y'all please finally just one candidate stand up and really have a platform for financial literacy? Because none of you have it. You know, the last one that I spoke to, candidate talked about, he going to put some piggy banks out there for the kids. Come on. We need to get astute in financial literacy. We have to know how money works and by hook or crook. And I challenge, again, all of my associates that are out here that are in the world of finance, you got to go on a mission to helping our folks get financially literate. And that's my, my public service announcement today. I hope you all understand. And I hope people will act, even if you just get a chance to to hear some of the uh, workshops that are out here. Uh, every Tuesday, my office does a workshop on how money works essentials. These are the essential information you need to know about the way money works. That being said, if you have any comments, issues, questions, please feel free to place it in the chat and I'll address it. But for now, since we've had this trip to uh, Tulsa, the Black Wall Street, Greenwood, Wood, uh, Oklahoma, uh, I would say is, is that everybody needs to prepare themselves to go there. And I think you would have the, the revelation as what many of us have when we go, when I went to Egypt, it was an enlightening period. And we need to get enlightened and we need to get financially astute. I'm going to say it, I'll carry it to my grave that we've got to get that together. If you don't know how money works and what to do with it, you know how to make it, you know how to spend it. Lord knows you know how to spend it. How about learning how to make it work for you and for generation after generation, generation. I was blessed to have the Legacy Award from the African-American women in cinema. And it's truly what my mantra is. We've got to build a legacy. And the way that we do it is, is that we learn and then we share. This um, Saturday is officially Juneteenth. It is June 19th. And I will be out at um, the, uh, and I'd love to see some of y'all come out. I'm speaking at the uh, Yonkers African American Heritage Committee is giving an annual Juneteenth African Heritage Festival on the whole weekend. So it's from, uh, Friday, tomorrow, three to five, they're doing a Pan-African flag raising at the City Hall Plaza. But then on Tuesday, on Saturday, they are going to do, uh, have a jamming event, uh, kickball tournaments, uh, base basketball skill workshops, Ujima Educational Symposium. I'll have the honor to be speaking uh, as the keynote speaker there, and then from there, a panel to talk about our economic situation. Economic situation, we need to pay attention to that. Uh, and then there'll be Youth Night Talent, that's gonna be nice, and award show, arts and crafts, food, merchant vendors, cash raffles, uh, music and live entertainment. And then on the 20th, we're going to have a unity worship service. You know, we're good at that. We're gonna do our spiritualism and uh, African healing drum dance. And so it's going to be at Trevor Park, uh, 501 Walburn, Walburton Avenue, uh, 501 Walburton Avenue in Yonkers, New York. Please come out. And if you're coming out on Saturday where I'll be uh, with the Soul City, with Soul City, and also with my team, the New York Powerhouse team, uh, for How Money Works with the How Money Works uh, company. 
please let us know you're there. And we will also be doing some raffles and gift giving just to have the festivity and also accommodating you on all sorts of levels to talk, just talk. We need to talk so that we can learn. So, um, you know, this is an, it's an enlightening time for us culturally. And so back to our wonderful trip that was um, during uh, the Black Wall Street massacre, acknowledgement, traditional momentum, um, you know, that kind of energy and, and knowledge that we went through. So that being said, we're going to so revisit why Wall Street is so, that, that Black Wall Street is so important. Because if we learn and Tulsa becomes free, all Black Americans here will become free. It's like when I was growing up and they talked about uh, South Africa being free. Because once it gets free, we'll, well, well, we got kind of a little better, but not fully. But here we are is things being made on a righteous level. And to share with me in this conversation, I'm going to bring on two very special people. Uh, I usually sit with him as in the mayor's forum, but um, we have the honor to have the CEO and the mayor of Soul City, Mr. Matt McCoy. That's funny. Hey, Lara. Hey, hey there. What's fun? Sorry, you said you, you said the mayor. You just kept saying the mayor. Okay, but you're it's the mayor. But it's true. Aren't I, you the mayor? I am the mayor. Mm. You used to be the mayor of Harlem. Now you're the mayor of Soul City. I know, right? I keep getting upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> and along with us, also who created the photojournalism of the entire event which this will go down in history. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the pictures that came from uh, Tulsa and uh, Greenwood during the 20s. And I thought about this gentleman because he has created our photojournalism of our trip, which will carry on to the next generation mm -hmm. and the next generation. And they'll say, who are those people? Well, for one, I stand as the first woman to be receiving the first person to be the recipient of the Wall Street Pioneer Award given by the World Conference of Mayors in Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So if and nothing else, I can say I got that. That was a powerful, proud moment for myself. No one else will ever get that award, Anna. Yeah. This the the Pioneer Award, the first. So no one the Pioneer is it. So I'm it. You know, uh, and I'm I'm very humbled by it. Don't think that I'm cocky about it. It's that it is such a true honor. Can you think about it? Being the first African American woman to trade as a full service broker on Wall Street, and to receive the Wall Street Pioneer Award from the Black Wall Street Consortium, Consortium that is such a connection. If we haven't come full service circle. I have no other example for it. You so, know, uh, yes. I cut you off, but the I just realized I'm going to lobby that from this point forward, the 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 name of the award will have to change from Pioneer Award to just Wall Street uh, Excellence Award or something like that. But it should be named after you. It should be the Yana B. Woodhouse Wall Street Award. Oh, Ooh. okay. Well, I'm going to lobby for that. Let me fly I'm down a little council. bit. I will talk to the council about that. <laughs> let me let me come down a little bit, but that that's a very big honor. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So to share this and to share some of the pictures and the information of what we went through in this photojournalistic mm -hmm. experience, and I do implore everybody, everybody within my listening voice, is to Google and look at Black Wall Street and understand the power of it. Because if we embody, embody right. that power we can do this again and black wall street will rise and it'll be all over this country all over this world so to share this with us is mr will adams who is our true photojournalist <laughs> yeah, hey good. how are you doing hey. there everyone how are you yes. will? not bad not bad not bad that's great <laughs> that's wonderful it's an honor to have you with us because you your eyes are through the eyes of God, it is just golden. They are golden. And so, you know, we had a serious experience. Mm -hmm. We have a, we had a revelation. It's a right. revelation. <laughs> exactly. That's what it was. <laughs> yes. On um, 
in this experience. And so I know there are some photos and stuff. Uh, you all want to share your, your views yeah. and what you want before we go to the photos, can I say one thing again? You know, thanks your show, but keep it uh, chiming in. <laughs> Can't help myself. Um, you said something in the beginning of the show that I laughed at and didn't even think about. And I said, my God, it would be so disrespectful. Um, when you talked about Juneteenth now being a national holiday, federal holiday, if there's a sale during <laughs> Juneteenth, if any store has a Juneteenth sale, I'm going to slap them. You know what I'm saying? That is, is going to be so disrespectful. And if any black person goes out and, and participates in a sale for a Juneteenth, if it's anything happening on Juneteenth, all black people shop free. That's the only <laughs> thing they can do. They can do that. You That's true. That's the only thing they can do to make it righteous. Every black and, person shops free. And the only other thing that I would implore people to do is with their children, their family, their loved ones, whoever it is, Spend some time with yeah, them. Yeah, if yeah. It's, it's a holiday, then make it a holy day. Mm -hmm. There you go. Don't make oh, it a holiday. I swear it may not be a damn sale. I'm going to go off. I can't wait. <laughs> if so, I, you know, we've got to make sure if we don't protect anything else, mm -hmm. we not protect um, right. Martin Luther King's birthday. But I do remember for Malcolm X's birthday, the December 12th. Shut down. They, shut it, they shut the stores down. Shut the stores down. You're going to recognize and, mm -hmm. and you're going to respect. Mm -hmm. And we would be totally, just totally disrespected if we go out and get some kind of sale for mm -hmm. um, December mm -hmm. December 12th. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not December 12th, for Juneteenth. For Juneteenth. Yep. We, we, you know, that thing would piss me off to know and <laughs> But it should upset everyone because then now, what have you done? Mm -hmm. You've triple, quadrupled slavery. Mm -hmm. That's what you've done. Because right now they've got us enslaved mm -hmm. with money. Mm -hmm. They've got us enslaved with buying. And so we need to be cognizant of the fact that we do not have to go out and no sale. Mm -hmm. well, if anything, it should be a buy black day. That's the other thing. I, I go but that. I'm not even going to even go that far because you know black folks don't know what's black and what's not black. You know, somebody will have a black face on and, and you know try to sell you some stuff in the store and it's, it's not their store. So I just say if anything is free. If if we, if we were set free that day, set the prices. You know, set the merchandise free. You know, what I'm saying we need free merchandise. Put a cap on it. A thousand dollars per person. You know what I'm saying? Whatever store you shop in, you know what I'm saying? Give us some vouchers or stuff like that. But damn it, it better not be no damn sale. <laughs> I'm telling you, I will boycott every damn store. It, it needs to be where we are doing what they say, cooperative mm -hmm. economics and right. building and helping other businesses, our businesses grow or spend that time putting together our business plans, uh, mm -hmm. workshops to help enhance our community. But a sale, mm -hmm. and I know that that can happen. You know, it will happen too. I know it. I'm seeing it coming already. I didn't even think because about that. That's right what there. they. I mean, whenever there's a, a mm -hmm. holiday, so let's not right. make this a holiday. I'm going to say it's a holy day. It's a holy day. There you go. It's a holy day. So yeah. on holy days, you know, we you holy days, you know, they got sales on Christmas and stuff. So you know, <laughs> so <laughs> we need to call this and make it a holy day where mm -hmm. we acknowledge our ancestors that came before us. And, and since you brought that up, uh, uh, Matt, I'm going to say it this way. Sure, say so. All that came here and those, whoever of mm -hmm. color, and it doesn't matter where the, sh the boat stopped because they snatched us from our homeland and took us across the Caribbean and around and so over. Uh -huh. And so we're all brothers and sisters because we don't know who belongs to who because they were separated and pulled apart. Mm -hmm. So since that's the case, we've got to understand the power of what lies in our blood. This is our blood. We have people that today we probably wouldn't survive it, mm -hmm. but to be on a ship. Mm -hmm. And if you'll ever get a chance, go down to Maryland and go to the wax museum in Maryland where the slave ship is, because I did that and I sat mm -hmm. in that that cramped area 
-hmm. and and started hyperventilating for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So our people stayed in that kind of, of atmosphere, small ship, like sardines. Mm -hmm. And for not one month, not for two, three months of water going up and down and people dying around you, people defecating around you, people, all sorts of body fluids running all people over the pain around you. Uh -huh. People suffering around just the suffering around the you. The pain and the suffering. And many people just died, mm -hmm. you know. And those people that survived once a month, they pull us up from under the caverns and what? wash us off and then throw us back in to the under ship. So we, our blood is full of people who survived that, survived it. That's not even going to prison mm -hmm. and being in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not three months of being in that with bugs eating on you, disease and everything, mm -hmm. and not eating properly, eating slop. They throw the stock down there. If you even got that. You know, and so up. you are the descendants of these type of people that made it through. So you don't have the right. You just don't have the right to be acting foolish anymore. Right. You have only the duty to respect what they survived and what blood runs through your veins and stand up and do right and take care of your family. And your family doesn't mean only the people that came through the same wound, okay? It, it means that those people who survived and looks like you in one shape or form, even those that got raped and pillaged by the masters out there, you still belong. You're part of family. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get our act together. We have to get our business together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense that you have a place like Harlem and and the businesses don't belong to us. It doesn't make sense even in the Bronx and all the rest of New York. You need to have some businesses. We spend too much time trying to be social service workers. We need to get to the real business at hand, generating income and building our towns. So I know I I, I keep saying it, but it really is eating at me because when I heard that they, they made it a national holiday. Only thing that went in my head, yeah. this is another ploy. We're getting okie doke again. Or just to keep us complacent again. That's it. What to keep us quiet. But when you give something like that, everybody's like, hallelujah. And the, the congresswoman, she knocked the gavel, you know, and praised the Lord. And I was like, cut the check. And they said the same thing. <laughs> they said, praise the Lord too. They know another holiday can make some more money off of us. They're going to make another trillion dollars. And we got these, these black folks quiet again. They mm -hmm. should be happy, mm -hmm. you know. And Biden's willing to, to uh, sign it. He should. What else? You know, Lincoln signed. Mm -hmm. So he signed. No, okay. No, but no, what no. do we get out of this? I mean, you talked about earlier, Jan, and, and I want to definitely get into where he was pictures, but you talked about, you know, emancipation and people don't even know the legal, true legal meaning of emancipation. You know, emancipation means to make over his property. And uh, people don't know that, you know. So you're talking about I'm emancipated or you can just make it made over his property. That's all. Well, you the other thing is, is to understand the, the stock market. And that's why, you know, we shouldn't be shied away from the stock, stock market. We should be making money on the stock market because we were traded on Wall Street. That's what that was, is a trading zone. And that's why you see that the Federal Reserve, that's where the auction block was. So we should have a kinship right there to how do we make money, not where people make money off of us. But that's what had happened because when they emancipated, which is make over into property, $600 bonds were tendered and per, per us. Mm -hmm. 600 bonds, which belonged was was given to the slave master. Mm -hmm. Tender, yeah, that part is left out the story that he tendered bonds to purchase the slaves. Wow. That's it to release that. So the slave masters didn't lose anything. They, they got six hundred dollars okay. for each one during the Civil War. If one of your slaves got killed, they got paid because there was insurance on mm -hmm. them. Come on, guys, this is the way that we're living today. We right. we still are not taking care of our 
ourselves that if something jumps off, we got protection. We take care. We make the profit. You know, my my thought, and I know some people think it's morbid, but you out here killing black people. Okay. Every black person mandated to have five hundred thousand to a million dollars worth of insurance. Right. Watch how fast those insurance companies will come and say, Look, y'all better stop stop that. Mm -hmm. As soon as one dies, you gotta pay a million dollars or half a million dollars out. Oh no. Mm -hmm. No, no, y'all stop it. You know, that's the kind of strategy. Stop playing checkers when you need to be playing chess. Yeah, right. What's I think sorry? I have what I'm going to talk about on Sunday. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Divine order. Got it. Oh, speaking of mindset, I, mean, I don't mean to um, cut off on the subject. I just learned today about Wall Street. I didn't know there were 20,000 bodies buried down there. I thought it was just you know a few oh, wow. hundred or whatever, but it's 20,000 yeah, bodies yeah. down there. Yeah. <laughs> and probably in the world. more because they keep as they keep oh, expanding that area, which is the African grave site. Mm -hmm. The more they step out, the more they find. Yeah, it's well, even no. like in um, in Tulsa, they found another area because when they were massacring everyone and shooting the men and women and children and going into homes and burning them down, as the bodies were left, charred bodies in the the shot, the those that had been shot and killed, they just dumped them in a in a landfill. So now they're finding the bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Sweet. it's been a hundred years, but it's amazing how well our bones preserve very well. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they're find they're trying to find out now, but they're praying that they will find out that this was just a group of people who died from like. Uh, one of the flus, or mm -hmm. one, yeah, but yeah. they're not the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna find out that this is another group that they did it to that they've done. We have gone over, and people are holding their tongues about what happened. You know, not discussing it. And the thing is, is as long as we don't talk about it, that we don't address it, that we don't rise above it, then we will come to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Continuously, it yep. took it took uh, a George Floyd being murdered in front of the world for us to get to this level. That's what it took, mm -hmm. you know. And again, I must say something that's not everybody not gonna like it either, and I really don't care. But Ross Baraka in New Jersey, the mayor there, I think he could have found something more to do than. Put a statue of uh, George Floyd in front of City Hall, sitting on a bench with his arms stretched out, so you can sit and take a picture with him. Mm -hmm. How how many times we gonna be the buffoon and and wow. how, how many times we gonna do that and let people use us like that and then we use ourselves? Mm -hmm. I know he wanted to make a memorial, but it would have been more gracious if you had made a memorial with his hands up. Mm -hmm. You know. Try and make a statement, but you got him sitting on a park bench. Chilling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is crazy. And, and a lot of times these days, people, you know, trying to get a spot in the media and they don't think things through. Take time to think it through before you, you act like that. That that was a major thing. Yeah. And again, who knows? He might have been pressured by other authorities. Hey, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, but you can put a you know bench out there, put my <laughs> we'll, we'll go along with that. So, you know. It's always somebody else. And that's why God bless the child who has his own. When you have your own money and you're not beholden right. to anything but to yourself, you mm -hmm. make things right. Mm -hmm. But I know they made a big ordeal about it. And grant you, I am very thankful that the that the God of my understanding made it possible for this meek and mild man, who was a common man, was taken to the level of really sainthood to change the world for us as a people. So I'm not belittling what was that he did. It's just the fact that I couldn't find nothing else to do to put him and then they got the people coming up and his arm is out like it's like McDonald's with with, with uh Russ, 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 uh Ronald McDonald. You got the arm out and so you lean up against him and so you are we crazy? 
I think that we have lost our mind. Yeah. All but, right. All right. You know, I'm I'm glad that he paid a tribute, but the reality is, is think about what you're doing out here. We've got to be more conscious and making a difference. And I know some aren't going to like that. You know, you're supposed to be thankful for what we get. I'm tired of being thankful for the, the pennies. I want the millions. So I'm, I'm tired of the pennies. <laughs> and that's what that is. That's a penny. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that's where I'm at. So um, I think we had, did we have a statement? Uh, no, we, we, we did the statements already. We waited to go to Will's pictures. Well, I didn't read the statement. Oh. Sorry, that's okay, this came from Stacy. It says, I think that if African Americans want to acknowledge Juneteenth, they should go to a museum that celebrates our heritage or support another learning opportunity. I, I, I agree with you, Stacey. That's, I think one, way. that's mm -hmm. one way. That's a very good way. You know, right. take it and 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 Go to a museum, go take the kids somewhere, take the children, go to the, go to the park. You know, it was something that Dr. Pukram said, Jewel Pukram said a while back, we don't know Mother Earth because we don't touch her. <laughs> go to the park, go lay in the grass, get some connection to, to the infinite wisdom of God. Right. You know, do something like that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Thanks so much, Stacey. Thank yeah. you. Okay, okay, so let's get to these pictures. Let's All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull them up. Well, we're gonna we're gonna let the world see these absolutely outstanding pictures. Thank you so much. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, uh, once again, I appreciate the opportunity. This this was definitely a uh, spiritual moment. I mean, mm. literally, because um, so much happened within this. Um, even with this beginning picture here, this was the picture when we first arrived to the area. Um, we happened to park next to this railroad, and this is the railroad that um, basically divides the north and the south. And what's interesting is that as Yanni and I walked up to it, she just started getting chill bumps all over the place. Like, you know, something divine is happening. And truly, it really was, because if you think about it, um, Old Wall Street and the pioneer of today's World Wall Street was actually joining and meeting for the first time mm. in a hundred years. Mm. And mm. It, 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 it was just an amazing experience. Um, matter of fact, Yada, what were you actually feeling wow. during that time? I was going through, I, I, like you said, it was chills. It was, and I didn't understand the magnitude of what was happening, but I felt the spirit was just in me. And the thing was, as I looked, and I think it was Sandy that said, look at the track, it's turning. And as she said it, I realized that was the track that those people running for their life, running against people chasing them to kill them. For what? For the color of their skin and the, the magnitude of them building a town that they could live and survive on their own. And here I am coming from New York City, mm -hmm standing on that track that so many women like myself ran to protect their children. And I was there to recognize that I'm here on this earth to make a difference too. You so know, that's right. Right. Not right. Kathy, what Will said about the, you, uh, the merging of the spirits. It, it was, I'm quite sure that the spirits there at that moment felt, um, in, in the energy of themselves that their child has come home. You know, they gave birth to Black Wall Street and here you come, the first woman to, to conquer Wall Street, you know, here, here in New York and in, in the new world, uh, let's say, uh, it has come home. And it was chilling also because it was more like the feeling I had when I first got accepted uh, at um, my firm um, mm -hmm. and I walked over towards um, the um, the stock ex not the stock exchange but the Federal Reserve, you know, because it was just a wonderment being in the world of finance. I'm here, currency, and then it dawned on me my people had been traded there, and there might have been a young woman like myself standing mm -hmm. on that auction block, and I just cried. 
I just cried. And I, I, I didn't know whether I was supposed to be there or not. And then finally I said, this is again, full circle. So just like it was full circle then, this picture shows full circle again. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that, you know, even from the beginning of, the, of that moment, you know, Matt did a magnificent job as far as planning everything out to the letter on his trip. And it seems as soon as we cross the track, things just start to shift. Mm -hmm. You know, we ended up in places where we didn't know where we should be going, but it was in divine order because um, I, I think, yeah, the next picture here, we didn't plan to go to this place at all. It wasn't even on the the um, the schedule, but um, for the turn that we took, we ran into the gentleman, um, I think his name is Tony. Anthony Brinkley. Yeah, Tony right. B, the poet. And he took us in and you would have thought we've, we've, we've known him for at least 10, 15 years, because mm -hmm. <laughs> he just brought us in with open arms. And um, we went to this first connection here, which um, I don't have the name of this museum. The Living Living Arts Museum. The Living Arts Museum. And I love this picture here again, where um, Yana, the pioneer, she's she's reminiscing of the things that, you know, that happened in times past. And it's just amazing how um, things start to work from here. Um, love that picture. Um, uh, this was one of my favorites. It's not Yana's favorites, but my favorite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I call it broken, but looking up, you know, ah. and, I, and I think that's the state of the affairs with the people okay. that were there in Tulsa. They are broken, but they are continuing to look up, you know, um, to the future and things to come. Mm -hmm. Here again, the, the brother Tony, I'm a, a great poet. Then we moved a little bit further down into the area where we had the film awards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to make mention to it as well. I had to really be careful on this trip because, you know, I've, I've actually done um, some documentary work before with some, some politicians before. And it's kind of easy. You know, you, you walk around with them and, you know, whatever they look and see and do, you, you just shoot it. But a little bit of background, um, I just happen to be um, both business and part friend with uh, Yana. So anyone who knows Yana, you can easily fall into a deep conversation with her and forget about the things that you were there to do. <laughs> so I had to separate my mind really quick. Hey, you know, you're enjoying this conversation, but look, you're supposed to be documenting what she's doing. So it, it was an amazing thing there. Mm -hmm. Another picture here, this was um, out on the, I call it the boulevard. And this denotes the people in as much as, you know, they've gone through what they've gone through and are still going through. They still have this homely, friendly demeanor that, you know, and it's, it's not made up. Now, everyone we came in contact with, going back to Tony as well, you know, they were just coming to us with open arms. Um, it is. That's, uh, yeah, that's the picture there. Uh, that was the um, Viola Davis moment. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw that pose, I was just like, here's a great person receiving what's due. Mm -hmm. uh, and another powerful. Thing. What were you feeling there, Young? I was, I was really touched. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't know I had all these plans of what I was going to say and all that. And none of that came out. <laughs> that it, it really was from the spirit and it was to tell my story for the first time I really got a chance to tell my story to my people. You know, um, as I said, as uh, I was receiving the award, um, I get awards. If anybody's been in my office, they know I have awards. I got mine. But there is nothing like receiving an award from your people, your community. It, it, it's, it's, there's no, there's no words for it. It just is, you know? And so that's what I was feeling was, oh my goodness, I hope I don't miss any to say thank you to anybody, <laughs> you know? And then I was like, but this is great, you know? Mm -hmm. And another instance where, you know, you get caught up in the moment. I know uh, this is my dear friend, business partner as well, receiving this award, mm -hmm. but remember, keep your eye through the lens. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you did it. You did it. That is an awesome picture. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This this was an amazing moment, too. And I, I want to share this in combination with the next picture here. These were two very powerful moments for me here. Um, this happens to be um, the Vernon AME prayer wall. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure, you know, many people small to large in, in posture have gone to this wall and put forth many prayers um, for the area. And it, when Yana walked up to it and touched it, there was another explosive energy in the area. And um, it was it's, it was just tremendous, a, a spiritual moment. And then for you to walk through this, uh, we want to call it a sculpture. And the assumption is that the bars are from some prisons. Prisons. Yeah. And then all the verbiage below there, it tells you different stats of, you know, how many people have been through the, the prison systems and what they do from there. And I actually call this shot here um, free, but still in the threshold of what had me bound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a photographer, a lot of times we are past situations like this. We shoot it and we never get to meet the people who we who have shot in situations like that. So. Matt and I haven't talked about this, but is this a private moment that you could discuss what you were actually thinking? You know what? I don't remember, honestly. Um, I only remember walking around it first, looking at the plaques and what was written down there on, on, on the floor, mm -hmm. and then going inside and looking mm -hmm. around and, you know, the rust on those bars and so forth and so on, you know, uh, and then just walking out and standing there um you know as if wow you know i'm free you can imagine somebody coming out of jail you right. know and you know i'm free uh and this i have this kind of how i felt i just stopped and i didn't really even realize that you took that picture yeah um, you were you were locked there for a second and yeah you start, you start gazing at the sky that's what yeah man you know it was like thank god i'm free you know um and that was kind of like a you know uh 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 uh, gateway to freedom for me at that point. Mm -hmm. And I want to even go back to real quick to Yana's picture when she was touching the wall. It was interesting how out of our, our whole crew, all of us walking around together and doing what we're doing, Yana was the first one to go up and touch that, that wall. Mm -hmm. She was the first one to touch it. She right. beat everybody to that wall and was the first one to hold, to put her head on the wall and hold it for a while. That was interesting. I had to go because that wall is the only thing that was left standing uh, when they did the burning. Mm -hmm. That's the only wall that was left in that church. And there's still uh, singes on the wood. And, you know, I drove y'all crazy because I kept saying, I need to get to this church. I got to go. I got to go. Mm -hmm. And when I said, I don't do anything else there that was my connection and that's why i said to you matt when we got back when we got back from uh tulsa all of us felt kind of strange you know mm -hmm. uh couldn't put a pinpoint on it we lost time yeah we did we did that's yeah. rare for me i mean i couldn't i didn't know the day it was like i was in a time warp for a minute forgot exactly. that I was back in new york and had a i was tired tired you know, my energy was gone and in one of my thoughts, you know, that came through is we left our soul there. Mm -hmm. That was the first time that we've been separated mm -hmm. from our souls because mm -hmm. our soul was still in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until slowly but surely the soul found its way back to it. Mm -hmm. Some people may say wow. it's impossible for your soul to leave you, but yeah, that's we didn't, right. we, the soul didn't leave us. We left it there because we that's our that was our connection. Wow. And I don't know if people really can understand and feel what, but I say everyone needs to, there's two places now that I would say in this world, you have to go. One is of course to ancient Kemet, to Egypt and touch, but touching in Tulsa, that was the answer for me. And it's also the level of, I don't really care what other people think. This is what we got to do, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. that was that was just a true blessing. And I had already been blessed by Queen Mother uh, Blakely. I had been blessed to, to hear the words that you will handle the money that we get. Now, mm -hmm. now, how far are you going to go then? If you ain't <laughs> flying by then, if I didn't have wings, I got them now. Because that was a touching moment mm -hmm. that we, we, we not only 
do I come from a group of people who were entrepreneurs and that's the truth. You know, uh, the majority of my family on the Woodhouse side and the Johnson side are entrepreneurs. So I come by it naturally. But to say that this is part of the world to make a difference and where this is where, you know, there's a book called Up From Slavery. Mm-hmm. We up from slavery and we're going to make the difference. You know, um, they used to be, they used it in roots. They used to say, you know, when the baby was born, they asked, are you the one? Mm-hmm. Are you the one that's going to make the difference? Mm-hmm. Are you the one? Mm-hmm. I think I'm one of the ones. I want to, I want to, um, cause I want to keep going with the pictures, but I want to just say that what Yana said about our souls still being in Tulsa, although we arrived home physically, I think it's so true. And I didn't think of it that way, but it's like, they held us back for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, our bodies got on the planes and came back, you know, saying, but our souls didn't need the plane to come back. And this, their souls kept us there for a reason. Uh, even even to now, I'm still tired at times that I'm normally not. I'm normally very energetic during the day, and you know I can go for you know damn near you know 18 hours with no problem. But now I find myself feeling more tired during the day, and you know I think our souls are still there in some way. I guess and, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, just me. <laughs> yeah, and we're being groomed for something. Uh, our souls are being groomed that we don't even know what's going on. You know, saying we're here physically and going through the motions of what we need to do, but spiritually, our souls are still there in Black Wall Street, which is why I guess we have such a connection still to it. And it will be doing more things and we'll talk about with another show, you know, uh next year with Black Wall Street started next year. But we will definitely take this photo journey and do a special show just mm-hmm. on the photo journey and our feelings of this. Great, great. Well, let's get into more right. of there it is. Now this place here, mm. <laughs> the Center for Public Secrets. Um, I really had mixed feelings dealing with this mm. place here. It's the Center of Public um, Secrets is the place where they basically chronicled um, what really happened behind the scenes with Tulsa um, and Black Wall Street on how they calculated specifically on how to carry this thing mm. out. Mm. And you know, as much as um, we were there um dealing with this um particular museum and you see the people here these are the curators of the project um they were very wonderful people you know they um have the good intentions of you know spreading this knowledge that's not necessarily being you know told in the media and that's fine and well and this is just my personal opinion and you know this is my disclaimer here you know it it may not be the, the true case of the matter but for me personally, as I stood there and listened and watched, that seemed to me like a trophy piece. Mm. And we have to remember who we're dealing with. We're mm. dealing with a culture who has no problem with going to the Amazon and killing mm. the endangered species and bringing it back and saying, oh, you know, I just killed him because it was the last one. And mm. rather than letting him die out mm. in the wilderness, I, I brought it back so the rest of you know the world can see it. Right, right. Has just yeah, and secondary too, like some psychotic people who go out and kill and murder people and want to get away with it and keep it secret. But that pride in them before they die, they have to tell somebody. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling that with this situation here. Wow. They got away with something just was incredible, but we got to make sure we know that, yeah, we want to know we did it. That's just me. And I would like to even know you, you guys' opinion on that particular place. That that's interesting. I I came out of it. I, I did not know um, all of the things that they were teaching. They were telling, and I got very angry. I got I got very, very and I think that's part and part of why my fire is so much in getting the land back. Um, these people, especially you got the picture over here of that Brady man who, um, I mean, took a, a human being, took a man and, and, and dragged him in the streets and tar and feathered him and used him as an example of what needed to be done in Tulsa to lynch. Um, 
think, you know, the, there is justice in the ancestors because he wound up shooting himself, committing suicide. And the, the mansion that he built is now owned by a black man. Uh, uh, Felix, uh, Jones. Felix jo Jones. Jo Jones. Felix Jones. But still, you know, I know there's a God and, and I have no doubts about it. Uh, but being in that place, it was it was an energy that that was just how dare you how evil and i'm glad they made them in red you know mm -hmm. but these people if you see the little line that's on one of the pictures it says that they are part of the um of the uh, oklahoma hall of fame mm -hmm. they're, they're being they they have risen in the level of history to being famous, yet they were the most degrading, degradating, disgusting individuals on this planet mm -hmm. for what they did. But another piece, which was on the side, it let me know that there was someone who wrote about it, a black woman, Mary Parrish, and I, I, I couldn't get her out of my mind. That's why I said, I know there's a spiritual connection. I couldn't get her out of my mind because I said, how would you feel that you're a young woman and you're watching all of this mm -hmm. and then you have, you're running, you're trying to save your life and your family's life and somebody, some of your family dies and gets killed and stuff, but you have the wherewithal to write it, mm -hmm. to write it so that it will be somewhere that someone would read it, uh, a young, a woman, from New York gets the book so that she can understand what you went through. Well, you know what I equate that to? I equate that to that young woman who did the video of George Floyd. And from years and years and years from now, when our bones are old and bleached, somebody's going to remember to watch that. They will see that video. Mm -hmm. Just like I sat and started reading this woman's book. Wow. Mm. It's funny. I, I I I don't know. Being in there, I felt like, okay, here's some good white folks who uh decided to bring the truth out, you know, and you know, so I had to give them credit um uh, for bringing out the truth that we never would have known probably if they didn't, you know, capture that information and display it. Um uh, I appreciated the the white lady there in the picture, um, and she I think Sandy asked her a question, and yeah, Sandy asked her the question, which was, "How do you feel? What is what does it look like for reparations to you?" Mm. So yeah, and you know her response was, "It's hard for me to say because I'm not black. I never suffered through that type of you know." Injustice or situation. So, and it was an honest answer, and it was a truthful answer, and I appreciate it. She said, "It's really hard. I can't say, I can't give you that that that, that answer." Um, uh, you know, but you know, and you know, being in that space though was, I was thankful of the space, um, because we got to see the faces right. of those that that started it, and those that did the killings, and those that. Um, deputize the, the people in the streets, you know, the white folks to go out there and kill and make it a sport day, you know. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know, my whole trip with this whole thing, as I look at this stuff, these pictures again, I still have an emotional reaction to it. Yes. Um, I find myself during the times there, uh, and not just doing the war ceremony when y'all looking at the whole world, but oftentimes walking through the town and seeing all these things i had an emotional feeling like, like i just wanted to cry at times you know mm -hmm. and i had to fight back tears even now sometimes looking at this stuff now i gotta fight back tears um and it's probably you know double-sided is tears of of uh of anger that this happened and tears you know that my ancestors in black wall street had to suffer through this uh over jealousy and you know tears of saying we haven't gotten anyplace else 
you know what I'm saying, since then. They are still keeping us from being economically empowered in a lot of ways. So, you know, and that's, you know, and that, and that goes back to what Yana was saying. I didn't really give it some more thought about, you know, how our souls are probably still here. You know, saying our souls are probably still in Tulsa. These minds probably still is. And whatever's going through it, you know, whatever's going through now, whatever the, the universe has it going, uh, taken care of, then we'll find out whatever yeah. I come up with and stuff, you know. So, you know, but let's go to the next picture real quick. We got, you know, time is running out. But, uh, uh, yeah, this is another series here. Um, I go here and here. This mm -hmm. is um, uh, Queen Mother Blakely and um, Mayor Layla. Mm -hmm. Davis, which is the first African American Foley, 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 Foley. Yeah. Okay, um, that was a moment when Queen Mother was basically endowing her with um, the honor of being on the Council of the Elders, mm -hmm. and this is a dual picture because, in as much as this great honor is being bestowed upon her, there's another story going on underneath there. Um, I don't know if it's my place to tell this story, um, Yana. If you feel you can tell it. Uh, what happened thereafter, where in as much as she's one of the first pioneers as well. He was the first black uh, female mayor. In, in yeah. Life. And she's still going through something to this date that yeah. she shouldn't yeah. be going through. True. And that's, so that's what what's happening in this particular picture here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, that's so true. The, the, we're still, no matter how much success we have, there's still trauma that we're going through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, and uh, you know, so this you know this wonderful lady. We, matter of fact, we're gonna have her on the show with us at some point. I'll get uh, I'll get her on the show mm -hmm. uh, on one of our shows, depending on what time it's like. Because uh, she is a phenomenal sister. She will be doing some work with us. We will have her here in Harlem. We we're, right. we're gonna bring her here to Harlem. Um, and uh, so funny, we were supposed to have on today's show um, two black women who are uh, one running for mayor, one running for uh, uh, borough president. president, Bronx borough yeah. president. And, oh, yes. uh, you know, strangely enough, you know, both of them found themselves not able to do it. And uh, they were too busy to uh, to do it. And I'll just leave it there. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, but this lady, we will have her back. And, you know, Yana, we're, we're, we're at the point. Uh, do you mind if we go a little over or? No, we don't mind. Don't mind if you don't mind. You. No, I'm good with it. Uh, Stacy had a question. The the red line across the bottom of the second picture is, is that the Hall of Fame? Yes. Uh, Go back that 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 second picture. That is where it says a member of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That that's it. As a matter of fact, um, I'm holding. There's a book. Um. The book. I know it usually doesn't show up properly here. It's really interesting. It, it, I don't know. We never asked what this a slut. <laughs> a -slut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but these are the architects of the massacre. And um, do we have to sign off for WHCR? No. No. Well, well, yeah. You can say you can sign off a little late. Okay. We enjoy, and I hope you all have a good night and um, enjoy and. We'll probably pay this for the second half of um, what went on in Tulsa, and hopefully we'll all get to see you soon. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So in this book, this was the um, this was the book of, they, and they gave this away mm -hmm. uh, to us. Mm -hmm. But this was all the orchestrators of. Um, the crime that they had planned three years, <laughs> three years um, they planned. So they decided to identify those that are in the Hall of Fame. And I felt that this, I brought this back so that we could um, approach, because I asked her, were the families still alive? Um, and were they still reaping the profits? of the stolen mm -hmm. land that all these mm -hmm. people stole mm -hmm. took away from the people in Tulsa, in Greenwood. Right. Are they still alive? And she said, and that's what I, I really appreciated about her was that she was honest. She said, yeah, mm -hmm. they're alive. And yeah, they're doing very well. Mm -hmm. And see, that's where we need to target. 
Yeah, that's what hit me, and that's what triggered my mind to say some other things to as well. I was like, they're still here, they're benefiting. Wow. Yeah, that book because we I think we all have that book. Um, yes. Uh, that book is a carbon copy of what we're seeing on this wall. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the right. stories that now again, Will in all of his genius, he he also the the words that are under every page, he also took a picture of those too. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the basics behind it, you know, are in the book. It says mm -hmm. um, the uh, Belton lynching of 1920. So there's also more lynchings that took place. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. It wasn't until 1921 when a lynching was done officially in uh, Greenwood, in Black Wall Street. And that was because the majority of the men had come back from World War I and they weren't to be played with. And that's also one of the reasons why um, they put this in the newspaper. I got one of the papers, this, this, this uh, the Oklahoma Eagle is a, a newspaper company owned by black people. It was burned down and brought back up. And we got the opportunity to meet the great, great granddaughter of the owner of uh, the Oklahoma Eagle. And for the anniversary, they did um, a tribute here, 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, day zero. Day zero. Day zero. And in this is the story of Dick Rowland. Now, y'all may not know who Dick Rowland is, but he's the young man that was accused of uh, attacking the white woman. What was her name? Paige, was it? Something like that. You see how much I care, right? Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I can't remember her name either. <laughs> and, um, but it's interesting because as we moved around, and this was one of the biggest issues is, is that story. It said that um, to, because of segregation, he was working as a shoes to shine uh, man in the city and uh, he needed to go to the bathroom. But because of Jim Crow and segregation, he needed to go, he had to go to the Drexel building in the elevator up the stairs to go to the bathroom. Can you, uh, you know, what other group of people go through this kind of garbage? Okay. And he, um, so he was getting in the elevator. It seems like the elevator jolted and fell on, fell near her. They say she screamed. There's other stories told. I heard that they, like they were already in a relationship. That was, uh, that's so why I said is he might have just taken <laughs> yeah. a bathroom break so he could get right. in. They were in a, in, 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 a, in a loving embrace. And, and the elevator um, door opened suddenly. They didn't realize that they were. They and somebody died. screamed. Right. That's what they say. She somebody screamed at that point because she was shocked by the two men standing there and seeing and, and embrace. And so mm -hmm. what happened is, is that uh, they arrested him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but ultimately the charges were dropped. Tells you something was. Clear. The paper didn't. They, the paper didn't get a chance to print. The charges were dropped until the day after the massacre. That's right, because they did this destruction. And the thing was, is that it was stated because of the uh, understanding is, is that the Klan and the white supremacists and all of them and this, the politicians and the police and all uh, were determined that they were going to lynch him anyway. Mm -hmm. And the men who had come back from war, who fought for their country, said, hell no. And they headed to the courthouse to protect him. On the way, they're saying that at some point there was a con confrontation and a, and a gun went off. They're not saying whose gun went off. When the gun went off, they, um, that started where they started shooting each other, mm -hmm. shooting, and not really shooting each other. The black men were protecting, the white men were shooting at them. Mm -hmm and killing, mm -hmm. shooting and killing. And there were white people killed too. They don't talk about that because they took some with them. Mm -hmm. But um, 
again, you know, they don't tell the full story, but that whole story about the elevator is just a little extra story. Mm -hmm. It's not the cat. It wasn't even the catalyst. Right. right because right. this was decided through a three-year process. Three years. How they were going three to years. Take this is this that. was just a dump off. Hey, we can use this. Right. Yeah. The time to get started. Yeah. Right. And that's what took me by surprise. I didn't even know that. And when, you know, because I was under the impression too, um, it was the whole elevator situation plus a, a few other things going on. But the calculation mm -hmm. to get it done by any means necessary was the thing. They had a plan all along. So, yeah. Next picture. Well, let's get to the next picture. Well, actually, that was it as far I mean, as okay. um, for tonight because I know we only had an hour. Um, so, we will, though, um, I, I, I'll say this we will do a full show. A uh, special show that we'll, you know, uh, broadcast us on television, and just do a little documentary on the the photo journal um, of the of the whole trip, and then we're going to do another one also with with about the trip itself, you know. So um, we're currently in working on that now. Hopefully, we'll have it ready soon, um, and we'll probably though I probably want to take our time with it to to give it justice, and we'll probably release it during Black Business Month in August. Uh, to be a good time to launch it. We'll probably launch it along with Yana's big event for Black Business Month. So we'll, we'll probably do it then, have it ready by then. So, Will, as the photojournalist of this affair, what's your biggest takeaway um, from this experience? <laughs> mm. Biggest takeaway? <laughs> um, how can you even put into words? Because, um, you know, I, you, you wanted to find a, a, a positive note out of the whole thing but it just takes me to the point of you know i've never been in anything major as far as anything racially you know motivated other than i did get you know pulled off the side of road by clan situation um when i was younger but that was no big deal when, when you when you grow up in that situation you're just used to it but um it's so sad that you have to say that <laughs> my yeah. heart goes out to my brothers <laughs> and my sisters that say, well, you know, you know, it's just like the idea that we have to, you know, I was talking to a white man and we were battling about this George Floyd situation and, you know, the specialties that we're getting. And I said to him, for your two little girls, did you ever have, did you give them the talk? And so he said, the talk, of course, I gave the sex talk. It's what we do. You know, what that got to do with what we're talking about? I said, yeah. that's not the talk. That's not our talk. Right. Our talk is, is that if the police stop you, you assume the position. Right. You turn right. the lights on inside the car. Mm -hmm. Gray. And you don't have eye contact, but you look at the badge and you bring yourself home. Right. You bring yourself home. And he looked at me and said, that can't happen all the time. I said, See, that's the difference. Your life is different than mine. Well, it's, different, yeah. it's not even just my my brothers, it's my sisters too. Because it doesn't matter with gender, mm -hmm. you know? So they don't understand what we do. When we hear that boop, mm -hmm. there's another world going on. You know, so and that's the thing, I think I was telling somebody that um, anytime I'm in a car, um and it just for some reason is natural to us that when we see a police car passing or riding alongside of us or you know behind us or whatever it's like oh here's that bullshit right here <laughs> and you know you you automatically just start to uh, get your story together and you ain't do nothing you know right. and um and you just naturally feel an uneasy feeling when a police car rolls beside you or they're behind you and they're just trying to get by you or whatever and stuff, you know, but especially when you hear that, 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 that sound, uh, and they're not even talking to you, but you know, saying, uh, it's, uh, it's just one of them type of situations that, uh, we just kind of have a natural now feeling that that comes up in us. Right. You know, it was interesting, Matt, you talk about the feeling. I always have that feeling. You mm -hmm. know, even when nothing's going on, I'm like, how do I get to the other side? Mm -hmm. But it was interesting when we were trying to find the march that was going to take place on the tracks and we were all walking 
and asking, you know, people where it because it got moved because right. Biden right. came right. into right. town. We won't talk about that. But but Biden came into town and moved all of the big events that were taking place to other areas. And so we were supposed to walk the entire five miles of track that those our ancestors ran on to protect mm -hmm. their lives and and hid in places to protect themselves. So as we're walking, we got, you know, finally I said, okay, Yana, you're going to have to ask the policeman. That's not something that I do. Mm -hmm. I try to do, I'll ask other people and stuff. And I even befriended one of the uh, anchors that were reporters because I saw her on TV that morning. Of course, we've got a star amongst us because Will was on TV too. They took a shot of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Sandy and Sandy was the first one on TV. Sandy was the first. And one. Sandy was on. He did a whole interview. Yes, and so um, the the part was when I walked over to him and I said, "Excuse me," and he says, "Yes, how can I help you, ma'am?" And I was like, mm -hmm. "Want to know what you're talking to me?" Okay. <laughs> So then I said, we're looking for the march. You know, where's the walk taking place? He says, you know, I feel so bad. They just put me here and I don't have a clue. You know, hopefully it's that. I see some people walking. But he knew, I mean, that was when he knew uh -huh. that he said, well, I don't know Biden's here and he messed everything up. And so now they moved everything. So he, mm -hmm. said he doesn't know. He said, I don't know. They just yeah. placed me here. But the thing was that he was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't have a chance yeah. on nothing. <laughs> That's funny you say that because I had a, I think I had a conversation with Sandy later that um it was just amazing. The the officers there were so cordial, they you thought they were getting ready to pour you a glass of iced tea. You know, I guess <laughs> but you know, I'm sure before they went out and, you know, on, on duty, they had that little talk with their yeah. captain. Be exactly. nice, be extra yeah. nice, don't show any aggression. Well, you know, know also, this week. <laughs> I gotta give my brothers and sisters of the Black Panthers sort of set a tone. Mm -hmm. Because the word was in the street, as I understand it, you know, because y'all know I had that experience with the Klan woman mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. that <laughs> sat next to me. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a whole other story. We're talking about that's story. another story. But um, it was word that they were going, the Klans were going to uh, erupt and disturb the, the event. And the brothers and sisters from the Black Panthers, the new Black Panther Party, uh, two days before, walked the streets fully armed with rifles, mm -hmm. pulled, and just walking and marching. And the question came, why? And they said because they were doing was to change the energy on how people perceive Black men and women carrying guns. Mm -hmm. Because Oklahoma is an open carry state. So they have the right to carry, mm -hmm. but they wanted to change the vibration. So they just walking and carrying. And got yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting a question from Stacy, and I think we could probably mm -hmm. get this here. Um, so as much of the talk has been brought up in the media because of current events, some still claim that they never heard of it before. What does that suggest? Oh, that they've never heard of Black Wall yeah. Street? Mm -hmm. I guess this. I'll say it first. We haven't done our job right. Mm. That, that I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not blaming uh, anybody but ourselves. And I think that shows like our shows, uh, Soul City is bringing a light because a lot of people don't. Look, it's no joke that, that uh, what's the rapper, uh, Steph Seth Simon? Seth Simon, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, 22 years old, born and raised in Tulsa. Born and raised in Greenwood. Mm -hmm. Never didn't knew. know. Didn't know. It's not taught in the school. I think Felix said that too. Didn't Felix say that he didn't know about it? He had a mm -hmm. lot about it. Which one reason why he bought that mansion? Yeah. Yeah. Right. When he found out, he went to buy it because mm -hmm. he passed by the 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 mansion all the time, but he didn't know the mm -hmm. history behind it. See, um, we have to tell our story. Mm -hmm. because nobody else is. And that's one of the things that came about, you know, I've become almost a student of Black Wall Street. And uh, some of the survivors said that it, after it happened, it was almost like a rape. Mm. It was like a rape. One of the elders said it was a rape. Wow. You don't want to talk about it. Wow. You just want to get past it. 
but you don't, you know it happened, but you don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the fault came mm -hmm. because they didn't talk about it. Right. And so years passed and it wasn't shared. And right. so it's a hurt. It's a deep hurt that no one can explain it. You know, it's like slavery. It's like the first time that someone calls you the N-word or the first time that someone does a racist thing to you. You really don't want to talk about it. Right. You know, yeah. I talk about, you know, to, to Matt when I was starting to move forward um, with coming on, you're creating the show. And he said, you know, you're going to have to tell your story about your life on what you did on Wall Street. And there's a story there. There's a serious story. But for some reason, it's hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. the, the, the bad things done to you, you don't want to talk about it. But mm -hmm. you know what? We got to get up and they say, get your big girl panties on and walk out there and start telling people. Yeah, someone needs it. <laughs> they got to know it. Mm -hmm. They got to know the secret. So that's what my, my opinion is. History is not, no one's going to tell your story if you don't tell it. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to tell it the wrong way if we don't tell it. Mm -hmm. You know, all the stuff. And I, I know it suggests that, you know, in history and especially in schools, this should be a, a, a told story. Mm -hmm. But we don't talk about it. Right. And that's another um, part of um, my answer to when you asked me what my takeaway is. My takeaway is to to dig deeper because I didn't know there were many other cities in the region that went through the exact same thing Tulsa went through. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And one of our dear um, uh, associates, uh, Gina Bardwell, opened our eyes up to Nicodemus. Um, Kansas, Louis, Missouri. It was Kansas. Missouri. Missouri. Near, uh, near Kansas City, Missouri, Nicodemus, another place, totally black owned. Yeah. I believe we met a brother who's doing a documentary on it, mm -hmm. and it's like 27 of them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we unfortunately teach our children about slavery. We teach them, mm -hmm. uh, we don't even tell them about before slavery. <laughs> And right. then when we teach them about slavery, it sounds like all we were doing was, you know, sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Mm -hmm. And we just laid down. You know, we don't talk about Nat Turner. Mm -hmm. And when we do, we talk about the fact he had a Bible. Mm. You know, <laughs> we don't talk right. about the fact, yeah. you know, yeah. we don't talk about, you know, many people I meet from Jamaica and they said, oh, we never had a uh, racism and sexism. I said, well, do y'all know the story about bottom belly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, what? I said, the Jamaican revolution that took place where they they not only took the the land back, but they they castrated the slave owners. Mm -hmm. I feel like, no, that's where the term dreadlocks come from. That's yeah. right. Dreadlocks mm -hmm. come from, from Jamaican We got to know our history because we're there to repeat it. If we look there's a George Floyd because there was a Tulsa. They mm -hmm. got away with it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, 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 uh, you know, an Eric Tulsa because it was a slave ship. You know, so mm -hmm. we need, we need to tell the story. And I, I'm you know, about that. And Yana, I'll, I'll close my my piece with this. You just touched me twice um, and pierced my soul not my heart, my soul, when you first said that, when, when Stacey's question, what, is, what does that suggest? And I left it up there on purpose, um, is when you talked about, you know, it's like being raped and we don't talk about it, I'm like, damn, you know, saying that really is, that really touched me, um, saddens me. Um, and then you talked about, we know about slavery which is when we were we were uh, held captive and forced to 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 be less than and, and treated like like less than dogs, um, but we don't ever know about Black Wall Street. We don't know mm -hmm. about Rosewood. We don't know about Nicodemus. We don't know about all these other uh, thriving societies um, that we don't know about. And uh, that is amazing to me how we know and they promote our pain, but they don't ever promote our gains. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, that's something we have to really flip. We you do. Know, we, we, we have, have, say, we we have, have to. Tell our, tell, tell our great stories. You know what I'm tell saying? Tell the stories. Remember, there was a sister that was there, and I have the card, which I'm going to copy it, but she had all the inventions uh, mm -hmm. that were done by Black people. See, you know, they think that we don't understand the fact that, okay, you put us to work, but we're going to find the best way to get this thing done with us, uh, you know, and, and ingenious ideas. And it was interesting. Uh, it was on, on uh, Facebook, and I shared it, was the, um, the steam machine for the uh, cleaners, right. you know, and now I have a different thought about that cleaning machine, you know, the right. cleaning steamer, because as a black man, probably he was working and said, okay, we got to find an easier way to do this. You know? I got to find, Yana, we got to, you mentioned that, I got to find, we got to do the research on, because my understanding is, and then you can logically think it through your, you know, on your own, you figure, you know, well, remember, a vast majority of inventions and patents that are out there on were created by slaves, created yeah. by black men who were uh, prisoner, and, you know, not to use that term, I even say prisoners and stuff. Uh, and but because we couldn't file a patent and get the extra intellectual property rights to something, the slave master took those inventions and. He filed the patent and got it, you know. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, I would probably, f uh, you know, from the moment patents were created to probably the 1960s, uh, if not even beyond, probably 75% of those patents belong to Black people. Right. It's when funny you say that. Um, just a little plug to this show called High on the Hog. Mm, if you get you haven't seen it. If you get a chance to see it, it's a series. It, it mm. speaks about um, the contributions of uh, black mm. found food, you know, mm. from the, the point of slavery and back to Benin. Mm. The, the wow. things that we thought was um, European of nature, you know, it, the, the Japanese and whatnot, it all started in the slave trade and went abroad. We created it all. Mm. Wow. So, well, I mean, you know, we could we created this earth, so there's nothing is surprising when you know yeah. that. You know, saying just that we don't even know that that we create. And that's what I think that we do a disservice to our children, even when they get fed up with us and they don't want to hear anything. Mm -hmm. We need to sit and um, tell them of how great so many of us, because I remember my first trip to Egypt and there was a young man on the trip. He was nine years old and he was failing math. And I remember his mother, I thought it was great. You know, it's August and she's taking him to Egypt. Oh my goodness, this child must be, you know, must be getting an award. No, he was getting it because his mother said, I wanted to take him to the place where math began mm. and where he came from. Mm. And that there's no business, he has no business failing because he comes from it. Can you imagine how great our children will be if they knew how great where they came from. Exactly. The possibilities. The reason why I talk at schools for kids is not because I'm trying to sell the parents anything. It's because I believe within my soul that they need to see that there's a woman out there mm -hmm. that deals mm -hmm. in money and makes money grow. Mm -hmm. right. They need right. to see that we're there. They need to see the greatness of a photographer that is a photojournalist that has an eye. They need to see, they need to see that this is a black owned network. They need mm -hmm. to know that, that this is a black owned network, that there's a black man at the helm making decisions. Because how can they strive if they only strive for mediocrity? Mm -hmm. They can't strive for it. You know, if you just tell them, look, you know, as many children as I've talked to, and I don't know what happened in our community where every child wants to be a social worker. Because that's the only thing that they get to see. I remember in years, my mother used to say the reason why she became a teacher at first was because that's all you saw was at the top of the helm was the school teacher. So now all our children see a rap artist, 
video vixens, you know, showing your butt, your, your breast, you know. So that's what they want to be because that looks like the good life. Mm. We've got to change the perspective of what's really right and how life can be. Yes. Create producers. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we need to do, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. Uh, and every place I go, so I guess I was trying to think about what I was going to talk about on Saturday. I think I'm going to be okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So it's all right. So I want to thank you for having us, Yana, on your show. Yes. Thank you for coming. I want to thank Will for the excellent job he did thank in you. capturing that whole trip. Thank I mean, you. I was oh, photograph. So like, wow. And he didn't even show I mean, some awesome photographs that are just like, you know, that my favorite picture now, and I know you got to end the show. My favorite picture is that young woman hugging you, Yana, during the award ceremony. Oh, yeah. That yeah, that's favorite picture. That's a serious that, that picture. Story. That picture is my favorite picture. Uh, and it just showed this, and I, and, I, and I forgot why she was hugging, I think, because she wanted to make sure that you got up on the stage. And it what was I did was, I just got to tell the story because I've got to find her. I'm hoping and praying in some way um, that she uh, contacts me uh, because what happened is Sandy, in all of her brilliance, said- Sandy's I, making up on the next show. She, we do yeah. we do up our part. Sandy's I had to, Sandy I had had to get, She said I had to get on the stage. Sandy, Sandy made sure I was where I needed to be when I needed to be mm. there, even though I wasn't paying any attention. She was like, you got to go. You got to go up there. And I'm like, I'm not going up there. They didn't call me up there. I'm not just going <laughs> to walk up there. What kind of, you know? And she's like, you got to go up there. And I was battling with her. And this young lady came behind with her mask on. All I could see was her eyes. But I saw the eyes of God. I know people think that's kind of strange, but that's what I saw. And it was, she says, you got to go. You got to go now. And then I stood up because I'm an obedient servant. I stood up and Sandy walked me up there. And she says, go right there. You know, and that was the moment right behind that. A few moments into it. That's when Queen Mother gave me the card. Mm -hmm. and presented me with the card. What if I hadn't gone? Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Ah, that was so a moment. what happened is that after, just to give you chills, after this wonderful young woman. Well, find that picture if you can. Can you find that picture? That wonderful woman Sorry. walked up to me and she said, I have to apologize. I am so sorry that, you know, I talked to you that way. And I said, you don't understand. That's no apology needed. That was God speaking through you. Because mm. I was being a stubborn person because Sandy was doing everything except for picking me up physically and putting me up there. <laughs> she wasn't playing. Sandy was going to get me up there. But that young woman's eyes were what I stood up to, to get up to the front. Mm -hmm. It was important that, 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 you, that you got there. It yeah, really everything in this trip has been divine, and I hope that the audience feels it and 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 desires to get more uh, because we have to do more. We've got to get our finances in order because Black Wall Street will rise. That's what will happen. It it's will rising. Rise. I mean, it's, it's rising, and I, I, you know, we will be doing some. We will announce, make all these announcements soon, but. We will be doing this on a yearly basis. And I am, we will be doing a cultural exchange between Harlem and Black Wall Street. Um, and uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of things because the story has to be told. It has to be shouted from the mountaintops. It has to let people know that we were great financially, that we, you know, we didn't even tell, we didn't even talk about how the, how the government borrowed money from Black Wall Street. That's, a, you know, right. uh, so, um, you know, we will definitely tell the story and, uh, you know, whatever I can, you know, whatever I do, um, you know, outside of permanently moving them to, 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 to Tulsa, uh, you know, we, we will be in Tulsa quite often, uh, doing what, what, what we need to do. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, that's true. Sandy Black Wall Street has unified us as, as a, as a race, uh, well, yes. you know, saying it, it's important. We need to have that, you know, that moment, there it is. 
that's the picture. <laughs> yeah, that's the picture. That's the picture. I just love that picture. Like that woman, it's that picture looks like you saved her. Mm -hmm. And she saved me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And you know, it's and this is a woman you don't know, never ever met in your life, but was so moved by your speech, as we all were, so moved by your speech that you had to, she had to make sure that you were on that stage, mm -hmm. that you were back up there again, because she must have known spiritually that Queen Mother Blakely was going to uh, uh, charge you with the key. I, the key. I just know that was a that moment. Was a super power moment. It was, it was just a real incredible. moment. Wow. And I didn't even know Will got that. For, see how great he yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that that's the that shot. That's my favorite picture of them all. Uh, it just it said so much, and uh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. We just have to stay on the spiritual path, and right. you know, appreciate and thank the Creator for all of His her wisdom, mm -hmm. and um, and keep going because there's more to be done. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I I, I know you got to end. And, yes, uh, I do. Yes, because you know, my producer you. told me I got to end anyway. Yeah, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Will. God bless you. And yeah, continue thank you. on. Uh, I know we'll see you on Saturday. I hope that all yes. of you who have the opportunity to come out to, <clears throat> to acknowledge, because I told you it's not a celebration, mm -hmm. to acknowledge the mm -hmm. uh, Juneteenth um, event and program, you know, because I, I choose my words because we can't let them think that, oh, we getting ready to, you know, play a banjo and yay, 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 because that's right. not it. And um, I'm just thankful. And I thank you, Matt, mm -hmm. you know, love you much always, you know, okay. just to let you know that what you're doing with Soul City, I'm hoping that everybody who's in an earshot shares the Soul City, um, platform and those of you who have some talent <laughs> you need to talk to matt because he will at least listen he may not bring you on but he will listen to see if you have something because he's hard <laughs> not easy don't think we all get our shows and stuff just because we, we family or we, we he like us <laughs> so um but i just hope I, i'm looking forward to it and i'm envisioning a true soul city of where we get to express ourselves and move forward. And I know it to be, and I truly thank both of you for coming on. Thank you for sharing the photos. It, it recharged me again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to be responsible for whatever those 30 minutes that are up there on that stage. Y'all just in trouble. Uh, okay. But, I thank you all, and I hope thank I you. thank all of you in the listening audience and those that will probably be watching this later because I know you'll, I have an after group uh, that, that watches. <laughs> and uh, let's stay and let's keep our minds on the prize and move forward and do it joyously because we are divine. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you all, and again, we'll see next Next Thursday, next Thursday, those of you who are have been trying to figure out this thing with all of these get rich quick schemes, um, uh, what is it? Um, Forex, um, what's the other one? Bitcoin. Uh, I'm going to have uh, some people who are very much involved to explain. I am not endorsing any of this, no, and I'll keep saying it. But I would say that they will be able to bring some knowledge. And that's what this network is about. Access Wealth Nation is about getting information and utilizing it to our best ability. So next week, Thursday at 6 p.m., we will have our session on some of these Bitcoins and also on um, Forex. So stay tuned. And thank you so much for your time. Be at peace. She was told that she couldn't play with the boys. She was told that they were too big, too rough, too strong. She was told to give up her dreams and move on. 
She was told to just be pretty, be quiet, be a lady. She was told that women had to stay on their side of the court. Stay in your lane. Playing and competing with men was insane. She was told that men and women would never be equal. Dreaming like that would only be leaked to your mind, to your soul. She never listened. She knew that their thinking was old. She is magic. She is the definition of spirit. She is what champions are made of. She is magic.